Okay, uh, I decided to do go over a little bit on filler valves, and the reason is I got looking at my YouTube channel. It seems like filler valve uh, repair is probably the most looked at video, uh, and I can see why, because a lot of uh, filler valves, you know, are usually a problem with lighters, you know, it's kind of like a weak link in the chain, and and uh, I thought maybe I'd go through and kind of uh, go through what I've learned as far as filler valves. I don't know it all, folks, and I don't claim to know, you know, I don't claim to know as much as, there's a lot of people out there that's been doing this for decades, okay, and and uh, their knowledge and expertise, you know, comes from, you know, years and years and years of uh, repair. And I appreciate those guys' service, uh, services to each and everybody out there. But I basically work on liars that those people don't work on because there's no more parts for them anymore, you know. So you basically got to uh, repair uh, the part that you have. That's why uh, when it comes to filler valves, I'd rather, you know, it's it's just easier to work on something that is, uh, that you can break down and take apart. Okay. Uh, let me pull up a few of these here that I think are non-repairables. as far as not able to take them apart, okay? Let me try to grab a pair of pliers and maybe a couple pairs of pliers. I don't have any soft jaw pliers, so let me see if this, and I don't think this is. Okay, that'll help explain what's going on here. Okay, first off, non-repairable. When I say non-repairable, non I mean um, a valve that is pressed together. That's what I mean, okay? And some of these, like this in here, because you can see there's no threads on here. Basically, what you got going here is you got a valve that's pressed together. And a lot of times, guys, when you pull these apart and you go to put them back together, sometimes they don't hold. They don't stay together. You might have to, uh, if you got one like this and you really need to rebuild it, you know, just pull apart as best you can without without deforming just try to grab it and twist and pull it out okay all right now what you got down in here is you got a you got an o-ring and sometimes these o-rings get hard Let's we'll see what this is. This is see my, this is actually fairly pliable. I tell you what you can do. The first thing I would try is get you some uh, pure silicone grease and grease around that seal pretty good. Don't get a big glob of it because you've got to remember there's a little hole inside this tube here. Okay, you know, underneath this here ring, so you don't want to get a bunch of grease in them. I'm just saying just uh, liberally apply a good amount, uh, you know, on that seal, okay? Make sure it's clean in here. Get your little cotton swab or something, whatever you got, and clean around in there to make sure there ain't a speck of dirt, because you're getting kind of speck of dirt or anything in there. You know, that's going to it's gonna hinder you... Uh, uh, you know, being able to uh, seal that uh, valve up to where it wouldn't leak. Now, I'll tell you what I would do, too, is 
means you got a valve here that that is doesn't screw on because it's a pressure fit I would uh, I would go to the auto parts store well you could probably if you got some super glue around the house I recommend I tell you what I would use yeah super glue will work get you some good super glue because if you ever have to fix it again you can heat it up and pull it apart now once you heat it up that much to pull it apart with the super glue on you probably you're definitely going to ruin that inner seal just keep that in mind otherwise you could try to use some blue loctite but just put a little bit of super glue right around this area here where it seats in and push it in there okay not all of them come apart like that one did i'll see if i can't find another and some of them like this in here i don't even know if this one i don't even know if this one comes apart to be honest with you let's just see Yeah, it does. Good deal. That didn't come apart. That didn't come apart as well. But, well, I think that might have screwed on. I don't know how that will work, to be honest with you. What is that screwed on there? Or, well, I can tell you one thing's for sure about this in here. I ruined it. Some of these guys just aren't repairable. These valves. Yeah, I ruined them for sure. Okay, and this one here, this is part of a Ronson valve, I believe. But it, it looks like it, it looks like it screws off right here. Okay, what I'll do, I'll just, uh, let's find out if it screws off or not. screws off. Any threads on there? These are the ones that's easy. Easy to work on. Because you know they're just I suppose back in the day. Let me focus in a little bit more. seal on there now what you want is uh, as far as your let me just as far as your seal goes you want your seal to kind of possibly move around there a little bit on that shaft on that internal shaft See, when you poke this in, that seal usually comes up and there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but underneath, let me poke it here. There's going to be a, a hole. Going to be a hole right in here. So when the spring pushes that back, this seal comes back. This end here seals against this bottom brass part, this top end seals on the inside of here so that's what keeps your gas from leaking out okay because the gas the gas comes in through this part here and out that hole I'll tell you what i'll do i'll just take this one off
Let me see if I can see the hole here. Well, that's a little bitty hole. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's a little bitty hole. Right there. Right. Okay. All right. So the gas comes in through here down to this hole. That's so why you push in on it. It's relieving the pressure on that seal from the back and toward the front. And that seal just kind of moves around and just lets that butane come in. But when this hair is put back on, the spring forces the seal against the back of this brass part right here and the other end of the seal is forced up against the inside of this. Okay. I'm just going to I'm going to put this back together. I like keep them seals in there, so just in case they do work. And I actually need this valve. I've gotten lucky several times on uh, several lighters that didn't have rebuildable valves. And I just happened to have a valve that actually just worked. And believe you me, that doesn't happen very often. But there's all different sizes of valves. Okay, now, uh, now for you guys that are Calibri guys out there, you'll see like on the electric lighters, you'll probably see a valve like this. All right, well, these are rebuildable. Let me see if this tool will take it apart. It might be a little thick, it is. Let's try this. It's a little big. It is. Oh, I think that's why I usually use this tool right here. Okay. You've got a Calibri lighter. Like, uh, and I say Calibri lighter, I mean something like this here. Okay. This is probably, the, I think this is the valve. Let me look at this valve just to make sure, to be honest with you. I'm thinking this is the same valve. I just need to check and see. Yeah, it's the same valve. Yeah. So if you got a lighter like that. Now, keep in mind that uh, that sometimes these lighters are uh, branded differently. Might be the same lighter with a different name on it. Say, for instance, uh, here's a... Here's a Firebird lighter here, but uh, I think this takes the same valve. I'm not for sure. Let me look. It takes the same valve because Calibri might have a name on this too. It might be Calibri actually making these for Firebird. You know, it's like you making a product and you're putting somebody else's name on it for them so they can sell it. Okay basically what you're doing well anyway um so let's go with the cleaver so here's what we got here now you know replace these seals on the outside guys i mean if you don't have one just you know put some silicone grease around it there's your spring let me put that down here and let's pull this out And there's what you got. Now, like I said, if you don't have an O-ring, grease that up. Now, if you got a Calibri uh, like this, um, basically what happens is, is this is a solid pin, right? When when you're uh, and you got to use, you got to use one of these. See how it's got an offset hole in it? All right, basically what that does is 
goes in like this, pushes down on the pin. Alright. So once you push down on this pin, butane will go in around this pin, out and into the rest of the lighter. Okay? That way when the spring comes back up it just basically seals around that uh around the inside of this. Now this little rubber piece here, that's just to keep uh, butane from spurting out the side of this refill valve here. This uh, fill valve right here like this, okay. Zamas use the same. Zama fill valves with a solid pin. They use this same type of filler. Matter of fact, I think it works more so on the Zama than it does on this particular brand here. But it will work. You just got my press a little harder get it to work. Now, being since there's a lot of Calibri lighters out there, let me see if I can't find a uh, no-ring that will work for that particular Calibri valve I got. I don't know if I got anything this, that small. I really don't think I do. I think I used them up, and I need to get some more. I know there's one in here. Let me open this up. I think I remember putting, I found a bunch of them in my little, throw everything in one place area and sort it out later. But I think I've, I had one in here. Most of these O-rings you see in here come from disposable lighters. Believe it or not. When I take them apart to get a pressure fitting out of them, I save all those O-rings. Because I'll tell you what, they will definitely prove to come in handy for anybody out there that might need a small one because you just don't i tell you what small o-rings are hard to find i can find them i think the smallest if i got one in here i thought i did i know i do i, I just probably i'm just probably not finding it but they're thick they're kind of like that there but a little smaller they're a little thicker I know I probably got one in here because I put it in here because I wanted to. I uh, I think this is no, is that it? That might be it. That might work. But you you want to get something fairly fairly fairly. You don't want any. Let's put it this way. You don't want the diameter of your o-ring any more than that brass piece okay because how this particular you don't want the diameter of that o-ring any more than the brass piece because how like i said how that particular valve works is when that is uh pushed down it allows gas to come in around this pin. So if you have an O-ring that's too big, you're not going to get any gas in your tank. Okay, it won't fill up. So keep that in mind here. All right. I can't think of the size. I think it's an O... Okay. If you get on O-rings and more... Um... It's a, uh, and type in 0001 O-ring 70 Duro. Check that out. 0001 is, and it's a 70 Duro you want, okay, on the inside. All right, let's just go with that for now. Um, so... 
let's put this cleaver pile back together. I was like, I don't have very many of them, I don't think. I think this might be the only one because cleave revalves are rebuildable and you don't really need to have a bunch of extra valves if they're rebuildable. Don't hurt to have one or two laying around in case you get a lighter that's missing a valve because somebody, you know, in the lighter lot or something. All right, there's that. And when it comes to... Uh, Let's see. When it comes to O-rings, guys, you, you you want, like I said, you want it to be a little loose, but it's still got a seal. Okay, right here. This here came out of a, uh, I believe it came out of a, uh, well, this right here, lighter here in particular. All right. All right. Now, um, Ronson is a Ronson valve. Okay. Now, Ronson's, these Ronson's like this. Well, they got a, they got a different, they're a different beast altogether. See that seal there? <laughs> It's a different beast altogether. What usually people do when they got a Ronson lighter that's got a leaky fill valve, what they will do is they'll get online. There's a guy out of, I think it's the UK. Let me take this out. That sells these uh, Ronson filler valve parts. Uh, but they're, uh, let's see if I can get that out of there. I think it's loose. Yeah. Okay. You'll see them on it. It'll be like, yes. Okay. And. I think this here valve, let me see. I think that, that apparently is not a Ronson. But they do. You know what? I might have one. Give me a second here. I don't know if I got the old valve in here or not. I got more parts in a little bit. Not as much as some, but well, anyway, Ronson kind of had a uh, had one of these that would uh, in here, and, and they gave you a replacement like this when you buy this new valve here for your Ronson. Bins of some of those aren't rebuildable with no parts. You can buy this fits in it but you know what these aren't rebuildable these are pressure fitted in all right and you can buy these kits and here's the great thing about these too good thing about these you dunhill guys out there you got like uh, one of these valves in your dunhill lighter see these these aren't rebuildable there's no way of getting that out of there doesn't unscrew or anything I don't know how they put it together, but then you can get with one of these uh, little tools that goes with it, and you just screw that down in there. There it is. And you get your Ronson lighter put that down in there and you grab you one of these little I got one of these little tools now this one doesn't quite work on this like it should and you screw that down in 
there you be. Now I'll tell you what, keep in mind, these Ronson valves will work in your Dunhills, okay? Uh, because Dunhills, you guys know, they got these little uh, filler valve caps, you know, that push in and turn. Well, Ronson has them too, all right? Same type. All right, so if maybe if you lose one of these for your, you got say for instance you got a silver, and you lose your original Dunhill cap, you might be able to get one of them Ronson caps. Just kind of, it won't look as good as the original, but you know it'll, it should work. I would think. All right. Well, anyway. Ronson and Dunhill valves. Not all, not all of them, but most Ronsons work in your Dunhill roll of gas. Just keep that in mind. Okay. There's that. Now, um, all right, you guys out there, you know what this is. I mean, this is the uh, this is the dreaded flame adjustment filler valve. All right, you got one of these leaking. Hmm. You know, there, there there's a. Uh, I don't think there's. I don't think these things come apart. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do though. I got next to one of these here, the long ones. And I'm gonna try to. Maybe pull this thing apart and see if it will come apart. I've never really done this. I think that, oh, oh, boy, it does come apart. Looky there. All right. Looky there, guys. It came apart. That's a pressure, it, okay. Well, listen, this is great. This is absolutely fantastic. Now you guys has got uh, filler valves on this, like you, like I am Corona Pipe Masters. Well, now you'll be able to uh, fix your own. Let's see what happens here when I push this out here. Oh, cool. Cool. Right there it is, man. Grease up that freaking O-ring or get another one. You know. And just assemble it. See, look at there. That's the first, you know, guys, that's the first for me. I've never ever tried to take one of these apart. And uh, that's that's a good deal. Now these O-rings on here. See these O-rings here. Um, for uh, for your pipe masters and, and all that stuff. I'm a thinking it's. Uh, I'm a thinking it's this O-ring here, which is a 1.8 by one millimeter FKM O-ring. You could just get some of those and try them okay um that's excellent that's a good deal that was really worth the effort i mean right there you put a little few marks right here but it's worth the effort now what i want to do is is i want to you know this is inside the tank you say well why such a long screw right well keep in mind though too that these these will vary uh uh, different size lighters, okay? Uh, they'll, they'll vary a little bit, see? And, and I want to explain to you what happens. This is like an assembly right here. And this is the valve, the burner valve. You know, when you lift up on this here, gas comes out, all right? And when you fill this up through here, 
butane comes through this hole into your gas tank and this screws in okay now how that works as a flame adjustment is right beneath here is what you call I don't know if you can see that hole down in there because I don't have a uh, I don't have a uh, there's no sponge in there but uh, I don't have a I think I do have a sponge here Here's an old, here's an old sponge I got. All right, that goes down in there. Okay, so what happens was a sponge is a special made material that, when you compress it, when you squeeze on it, it doesn't allow any gas to flow. The the more you compress it, the less gas goes in. That's why when you tighten these down, you know. Well, when you tighten these up, the more you tighten it up, is the less the lower your flame will be. And when you counterclockwise unloosen it, the higher the flame gets because you're allowing the sponge to decompress and get more gas through it. Okay, and the gas, the gas on this actually just comes around uh, the thread area here. All right, so. You know, it's amazing the fine threads and stuff on this, but on this particular, that's just the way it happens. The gas comes around the threads. All right. Well, that's that. Now, this here, guys, um, this come out of a either a Calibri pipe lighter or a Peterson pipe lighter. What I'm talking about. You've seen those ones. Uh, oh, they got the little button on the side. You poke, you poke them about yay long. I don't know, but they got a 90 degree flame. They're the older ones, but uh, this is the type of valve it's got. It's got like a wick assembly here. Uh, it soaks up butane and brings it through this channel here. Now, can't, I don't know if this one's repairable or not I mean it's got to be it's got to be pressed in there like the other one but I bought a Peterson I had a Calibri bad so I bought a Peterson for parts and here's what I did notice on this the threads on the Peterson and the Calibri was different here okay so I couldn't use one in the other now I'm going to go ahead just for the sake of doing it see if I can't pull this one apart don't want to ruin this in case I'd ever need it to work on something, but I gotta know if I ruin it, I ruin it. Well, there it did. It did come apart. But let me see how much I damaged it though, okay? Uh, still usable. I have to file down the the burrs and stuff. But to be honest with you, it looks like they're soldered around this, so but it must be pressed on. I don't know. You just have to try. If you can't get yours off, might have to heat it. Get your little burner there and heat it until some of that solder gets soft and maybe pulled apart that way. But it does come apart, but uh, it didn't come apart to the point where you can repair it. Okay. Um, I'll try to find a picture and insert it in this video of what type of lighter this type of fill valve came out because this might be the one that you can't repair, period. So I'll try to insert a picture in there and show you if you when you see it. Uh, they make them in uh, Calibri and branded Petersons and whatnot, but if you see that type of pipe lighter, it's got this mechanism in it. So that means this filler valve might not be repairable. Now... 
that you, how you test it is you just put some alcohol down in here. Now, if it's leaking around here, just replace this seal. But if it's leaking on the inside, you could just be out of luck. Okay, just just so you'll know on that. I think I pretty much hit uh, all you need to know on that. But, you know, small O-rings are hard to come by. Um, but some of the ones that I do buy that you might be able to get to work is these two particular ones. All right. These two right here. This is actually has some washers, but it's got some flat washers in it too, which will come in handy. Especially if you're if you're needing to put a flat washer in a valve, uh, like a burner valve, say for instance. And there's this in here. These are like for little watch crown O-rings, but if this is all you got, these things are just these things here are just minute. Oh, look at that, 1.4 millimeter. See how small them are? And if that's all you got, it'll work. It'll most likely work. How long it works, I don't know. That's the question. Because these aren't what you call like a, like a, a nitrile rubber. Okay, here's just a regular rubber. Okay. But, but I have used them and have got them to work. The fat washers aren't so bad as far as uh, these, they're not so bad as far as what you need to use the flat rubbers for. All right, there's that. And I'm a thinking, I'm a thinking that's. That's probably about good to go on these. You guys got any questions or anything or, you know, uh, these here are, these valves here that I use are KWA aerosol valves right here. And I've been using these whenever I got a lighter like a, uh, or like I do a filler valve, valve mod on a Zema or if I got a, a Flaminator F12 pipe lighter that's got a valve that uh, needs repaired on it and I can't fix the regular one. This is the one I'll use. I, uh, I was using on some of my first um, filler valve mods for the Zamas. I was using that same valve that was in here. You probably noticed it, okay? But uh, this in here has an edge on it, and I kind of like this one better. And the reason I do like this one better, because this one's rebuildable for one. Uh, the one inside here isn't, unless you can get it apart without burgering it up. But, and another thing is too, these have a little O-ring on the inside. So, if you're using, you know, refill a uh, can of butane that's got a metal valve on it, they're more apt to, uh, they're more apt to, you know, seal. All right. All right. Uh, I got a, uh, I'll tell you another thing too. It just come to my mind. I had some Calibri lighters that were, like a, I can't think of as a something, something like a fifty-five or something. And what it is, it's it's like a a light alloy. It's not made out of brass. It's made out more like an aluminum or something like that. And let me tell you about those lighters. Uh, I had one. I couldn't get the filler valve out of it. Okay, I, I mean I couldn't for everything that was within me. You had two options to heat the whole body up, which is probably going to ruin the uh, plating on it. Uh, you know, but uh, what I ended up doing eventually is I, I didn't get it out. I ruined it trying to get it out and I had to put an easy out in there and uh, turn it out that way to get it out because the brass and the alloy aren't a good combination. Okay, they just kind of, uh, it's just like a, you know, rusty bolt, you know, it just gets locked in there, you know. And if you ain't worried about your finish, then I'd say put some heat on the end of it. 
it'll probably come out but are you going to be able to uh hold it uh you know with like a you better have a good screwdriver that fits in there perfectly or some tool or something because this brass is soft you know so yeah, you really got to be careful when you're trying to get these fill valves out you know i still use mostly I got some of these tools here that you can get on eBay. I'm thinking this in here. That works. This in here probably work a little better. Yeah. Okay. I never had no trouble with these. These these work good. They're a little bit heavier, but I did kind of file some of these down to get them to work uh, in the process. You know, I've broken pins off too on them, as you can see. But uh, another thing is too, if uh, say for instance, like on this here, okay, you want to get down in there and you want to you know, unscrew the top part of this valve out. See the two little slots there? Well, the problem is, is there ain't enough depth of clearance, you know, depth in here to be able to do that. Look how this, this, uh, this isn't very tall and I, I don't have enough. Let me see how much I got in there. Well, there should be enough there. But it's still not the right size, okay. Um, that's the problem I have with these. Sometimes I try to get a valve that's got a long stem on it and there's not enough depth in here. So you say, well, what do you do? Well, you know, I got one of these. Sometimes these will work pretty, let me check it out. Yeah, that'll work on this right here. You can get these off eBay. Just look at Ronson filler valve tool. Should pop up. Okay, guy's out of the UK, I believe, and I'll tell you, he ships fast. Well, I shipped, I've got uh, ordered stuff on Monday and get it uh, at the end of the week. I mean, he don't waste no time, he ships it right out. All right, so you get one of these. Now, the only other option you got, if you don't have that option, what I would recommend is uh, say for instance, if you got a tall stem on your burner valve, get you get your nut driver, the appropriate size that fit here, and just get your Dremel tool and Dremel it to the size you need, because that's what this is right here. And uh, you know, there's uh, more than enough clearance in here. I don't know if I got something here. There's more than enough clearance for the tallest, you know. Here, right here. Let me see, this should fit in here. It doesn't. But anyway, there's more than enough clearance for about any of the tallest valves, you know, you get. This is what I'd recommend. Now you're going to have to get a Dremel tool on the file and a steady hand if you want to do it this way. But this is what I recommend right here. You always got to use steel tubes. Uh, guys, don't you try? Don't try to make a tool for this stuff out of brass because the brass isn't strong enough. That's why when you see these tools like this, they're made out of steel. Well, you know, a regular steel or a stainless steel. Either way, as long as it's made out of steel. You know, I've made I've, I've made these here back in the day, and I first started. You know, for getting out these like filler valves like this. You see. Now that kind of fits in, well, it doesn't fit in this in particular, but, and I'll tell you what, what you're going to do on this, if that doesn't come out, you're going to strip the inside brass here, and you're going to ruin it, you ain't going to be able to get your valve out, that's why I recommend it, if you can find a tool or make a tool, what I would do on this, is I would, uh, I think I had one, kind of made. Let me look. I 
had a tool. I have a tool. I don't know where it's at now. I violated it down here somewhere, but anyway. No, oh, hold on here a minute. I don't know. Anyway, make you a tool. You know, it's best if you can get something that's it's best if you can get something that'll sit inside inside this, just like this, because what that does is keeps you from uh uh, you know, going right, left or right off the slot, stripping it out. All right. That tool there for, I use it for Dunhill, and uh, like I said, you can use it on your Dunhill roll of gas or on your, uh, you know, uh, Ronson liners, but that is like $25 tool. But it's excellent stainless steel quality. Knurled here on the end, you know. Works great. Once in a while, though, with these valves hard to come out, you might have to stick a pair of pliers on there and hold down and really turn it. But if, if I, if you, if you can, if it's that hard to get out, uh, if you can, put a little heat on your lighter without ruining the finish and go ahead and try that. Well, I hope that's it because that's about all I can think of right now, unless uh, unless I forgot something. But if I have and you think of something, just let me know.